Villa and they're going to be taking out the first attacker and that is going to be a Dockerby. It's a shock horror. That kind of actually is a band that if G2 ban away uh, Ying here, I think they've actually set up for a really hard attacking half for SSG. Only because DKB was sort of the pick they went to, the crutch almost in a way, when they didn't have the Ying on side on that last map. That was Yeti playing it for the majority of the game. And although he hit some great shots with the Mark 14, ultimately didn't really get too much use out of that operator. But Sledge is going to be the band taken away by G2 there, looking to remove the grenades off the board. Sol is also taken away. Clearly one in their attacking half to go maybe a little bit smoother than SSG had planned. In will come our final defender ban then. It's already locked in. It's going to be Valkyrie. So that shapes things up for us. Uh, again, not huge surprises. Sledge is a little unusual. We don't see too many sledge bans, but uh, completely understandable here on Villa, especially if you're trying to defend downstairs. We've seen a few living room library defences um, come along out of G2. So I think that uh, you know may just explain that, Des, that they don't want to be allowing SSG to get top floor and uh, rip the floorboards up above them um, if they do choose to go down to living room library on their defenses. Absolutely. Here we go then. Round number one is underway, starting off in Aviator and Games. Benj is going to be absolutely delighted. He started this tournament playing Kavira, found crying in round one, and screened an expletive right across the room straight at crying as the target of his ire. Here he's on the nook, so a similar S operator in the sense that she is extremely quiet, has the frag grenades in back pocket, Cav obviously doesn't have those, but still a similar sort of play style where you're looking to catch the other team off guard. Unless SSG are sharp, I do think he can do some real bad damage to them. Right, Hotton's going to be playing on the castle. Uh, just uh, castle in Wolf Window at the minute. Going to be heading over to Master Side as well. Um, so we're going to have a, a presence, I would expect, over here from SSG, wanting to prevent that north side and push coming in uh, from G2. The interesting thing, obviously, immediately is going to be where the G2 shape up to attack. They've actually spawned over at Master Side, so they're going to be heading into that north side, I think. So they're going to be playing directly into the utility um, of SSG. We've got at least Virtue over there. We've got a few over on Study side as well. Blur, Alamal and Benja all stacking up on this side. So a split push coming in from G2 by the looks of things. Um, and SSG, they better be ready. What I do like is we get the different side of G2 here as well. Obviously, we've seen them completely demolish uh, SSG on the defense on the last map, and now we have to see how they can fare on the attack. Do I think they can be 6 here on the attack? Probably not. Although W7 ended a pretty good job of it yesterday, I believe so. Who's to say? Nate from Benji coming up over the top. They have the idea that he was coming up red, so mate might just try and rotate himself away here and push him from a different angle. Maybe expecting to get pushed was fallen back deeper in towards Red Corridor. Whilst we have a couple of members still looking to work on the study side of things here. Alamo and Blur stacking up. They've actually largely foregone the master side now of G2, all coming in towards main stairs and study. Uh, I think it's Bosco that's playing on main stairs at the minute. I think that nade will just fall a little bit short. Um, so he's going to be coming under some pressure pretty soon on those stairs. First Toxic Babe Canister will go out just to try and prevent that. He's actually going to dip away and just try and work with these vertical angles. It's a nasty little angle from behind yeah, bar there. G2 are aware of it, but they just keep going. They don't care. Doki's going to walk up, get a kill onto Ramp. He will be downed and killed. But oh, Benja continues and manages to get the kill through the floor onto Bosco. And that leaves us quickly in a four versus three at the Such halfway mark. A smart read by Benja as well. He comes back down the main stairs, finds the drop onto Yeti as well. That's a freebie. It's like a Christmas gift coming down the chimney. Far too free for Benja, but again, to commend him, he started pushing up the main stairs with Doki once the smokes came out. He dropped back, but immediately turned his gun towards the holes that Bosco was holding. And the thing is, Bosco's going to see his legs first, yet Benja still wins that engagement. Really, really sharp play from the newbie to G2, putting them into a four versus two here in round one. Fultz is trying to get aggressive and push back into 90, hold on to top red, but will be slid by Benja, who finds the headshot. Here comes Hotton, though. This could be a really big flank. I don't think G2 are aware. He's got to make the most of it. He gets one. Can he find a second? Uh, yes, he can. Great play from Hotton. That's exactly what SSG needed, but Blur has got an opportunity to put this diffuser down. He's likely to stick it over three quarters of the way through. I think that is going to be job done. Hotton trying to push back in from behind bar, but no, Alamo finds the final kill, and despite <laughs> best effort, it's hot and unable to drag SSG back into that one. Kind of interesting the virtue came out as well there with his gun not up and I was like, eh? He's like, you know, he's just killed your teammate, right? Maybe he was expecting him to have ran down 90 and was going to pursue him. 
but did hand over a little bit of a freebie. Either way, it was a four versus two. Oh, sorry, four versus one, and G2 won't feel too bad about it. SSG, though, probably do. Aviator Games considered the go-to primary defensive site on Villa. The rest considered the offsite. So you have to kind of grin and bear and really fight your way through. We're going to try it again here, see if we get it working a second time. G2, though. I think they're feeling pretty confident and they don't look too different compared to the previous map in terms of how well they're playing and how much sharper they look compared to SSG. Going to be setting up in Aviator Games again and it's going to be hot and on the mirror this time rather than the castle so it looks like it's going to probably be um, a slightly stronger sort of site based hold rather than worrying too much um, about offsite. Rampy does manage to get one uh, castle barricade down at the bottom of Red Stairs there. I'm just uh, interested in how far he extends beyond that because last time a lot of the castle barricades were off towards the north side in Master Bedroom um, but it just didn't really, uh, you know, they didn't really get much value out of that because G2 just didn't really play into it at all. But interesting positioning downstairs here from Hotton. They're going to try and uh, prevent any pushing around underneath. Playing downstairs never a bad thing, of course. C4's looking in towards the hallway. The number of times you've seen teams kind of work their way in from the north side down and then get punished for that has been odd. How many times have seen it happen now that I can think about it in memory? For G2. A slightly different approach as well. Some on the north side, some on the south. Really scattering themselves to the high winds and looking to potentially pick up Rampy, who's still got himself working out here on the other side. Benja's trying to get in on the other side of him here as well. He has put down one of these castle barricades, which means he's only got to look out towards the west. But it does make me concerned that Benja's still going to be able to find him and dig on through with drones coming through at his feet as well, making sure it's a safe path forward, getting their entry in to do some work. Drawden will continue. Um, Hot Cod's got himself back up onto the top floor. Rotero drone going to clear out that castle barricade on Wolf Window. So Rampy's position will be slightly more perilous, but he's still um, in a good spot to try and hold on to that. Fultz is underneath at the minute. We saw Benja roaming around um, downstairs on the knock previously, but uh, just hasn't really been down there to get that cleared out. They're not really worrying about it too much at the minute, G2. The Nitro has been expended. Um, so they're pretty much good to go from this north side if they want to mm. push forward from there, which it it looks like it is going to be the sole focus this time. I'll give it to SSG though. Rampy's kind of dynamic use of the castle barricades there has burnt through a little bit of extra time and slowed things down at least somewhat. G2 do still have 90 seconds with which to play though. With three members now stacking up on the north side, utility starting to rain. Here comes that push forward and it's a pre-fire onto Hot and Cold as well from Virtue. Great shot, finds his man. There's still one more pushing up around top red as well as Yeti trades back onto Doki. Four versus four. Opening the vault might cause a little bit of a problem. Bosco looks to get aggressive on it and beautifully yeah, so. Almost misses his shots, but it doesn't matter. He picks up the head of Virtue and this is the sort of round that SSG might need to get them back into things. Three versus for G2 still pushing 58 seconds left to go so they've got plenty of time but Rampe he's on a big rotate here he is Benjamin's got himself into a good spot though with a great angle all the way through sight here only takes one defender to move one step too far and it could be a freebie going through into that last 40 and this is where G2 will have to really pick up the pace a little bit they've got a couple of Roteros left and the flash in the back pocket but they've also got a contest with the smokes that are now coming out of Bosco has none left in back pocket which means they'll have about 25 Benja looking to go for a very much a last second rotate here with just 25 seconds left on the clock I was just going to say one problem was that they were allowing somebody to still play inside a vault when they'd opened the wall up but alamo has gone round to deal with that and they have no idea that he's stood in there couple of kills come in one either way Alamo gets another Another great round from him so far. Opportunity to put the diffuser down potentially. Alamo's just going to be waiting for that push to come round. He's going to go down. Blur's likely to stick this. Here we go as well. Blur does stick it indeed. Alamo's looking for all the fights that he can. Gets down by one, which leaves Blur in a one versus two. He's won one of these before. Diffuser is down. He has the advantage, but he's got to win his gunfights and can't even see the man because of his sight. Fultz finds the kill and SSG finally get themselves around in this series. I think Blur was playing on some, some quite specific information there potentially because he was very focused on one point but as you saw the, the breach that he was looking through extended far to the right um, and he didn't really pay too much attention to that and it just allowed him to be picked up for free almost at the end um, but uh, slightly better from SSG still the diffuser goes down they had to battle back um, but you know those are those are the things that you've got to show that you can do in this sort of situation they just lost eight rounds in a row um, you know they had to do something to get back on it. 
Yeah. Still looking good though in terms of spirit cheating. Yeah, I mean, if Alamo <laughs> gets a couple of kills. I mean, oh, when yeah. you're 8 and 1 across the series, you're not going to be in low spirits. Oh, you're not going to worry you? about it. Alamo yeah. steps into Vault, gets a good kill onto Bosco. If he finds Fultz, Fultz was down to about 10 health. It was, you know, that was a, a real key kill from Fultz onto Alamo, leaving Blur in the 1v2. If that goes the other way, forget about it. You're 9 0. Like, simple as that. So the pressure is there for SSG at the minute. It's not going to be easy to, to win those gunfights, but hopefully that's a foundation for them that they can build on. All right, now that they've won that main primary site, they're obviously going to move things away here up towards the north side in trophy and statuary. A site that some teams have avoided so far, actually, here at SI. I'm quite curious to see what the stats are, so I'll pull those up in just a second and see how things have been bubbling down so far. But I know where we've seen a number of teams go to has been down towards Kitchen. We've seen a few plays of Living and Library. In fact, I think on the first day you and I cast, we did a game of Villa, and we did go down to Living and Library as our starting site in that game, which was a, a little bit of an attempt to throw the other side off. I don't know if it worked. I can't entirely remember. But as a quick look at some of the map stats, we have seen Villa played so far the least of all maps. It's only been played three times. And in fact, Living and Library was won by the defenders, but only the one time it was played, which was on that first day, Tim. Otherwise, Kitchen and Dining and Trophy and Statue are locked up at nine plays apiece. Aviator and Games at 15. I'm just going to have the Incandellas coming in very early there. Um, that's what I was listening for. 50 seconds into the round, um, already being deployed by Doki as he looks to maybe cause a bit of a nuisance. Out go to Smart Canisters as well. He's forced Rampy away um, from his position at the top of main stairs, but um, you've still got Rampy and Fultz holding on to this south side. Yet he's supporting in 90 corridor as well, and that's a lot of utility used from Doki for, for not very much, Des. No, it's a lot been burnt through, but sometimes you just want it to get control of ground a little bit quicker. It does mean they have less when it comes around to the executes itself. But still, four frag grenades to burn through means that Alamau and Benja could go fishing here and find a couple of kills on their step through. Here we've got Yasuchi starting to rotate their way back from the south side. In fact, Yeti looking to work his, day, his way down into the red corridor. I think there was still one really far down towards main stairs as well. But here's Benja with those nades that I was speaking about, hoping to find a player, but steps away. I'm going to get caught out by that frag grenade as it comes through. Just going to be looking up through that vertical angle. G2 do know that these players are there. That's why Doki sent the utility in, but they just didn't really gain anything from it. Um, somebody no. is holding oh, gone. onto Master very, very hard. Blur is going to be getting the kill onto Hot and Cold, and that's going to give G2 something at least. Um, Alamo managing to find Bosco, and this is a shame for SSG. Again, they've, they've tried to defend right up to the boundaries, and they've done a pretty good job oh. of it. Um, but G2 just picking them off one at a time. Yeti managing to find Alamo. They're going to likely know that he's coming up Astro stairs though, and he's going to find himself stuck between a rock and a hard place. Oh. How do you deal with that though? You just shoot the hard place in the head. Dorky's going to be there for the trade on the window. Three versus two now. SSG, can they hold on for 40 seconds? That's the live list I think I've seen SSG so far in this series. Specifically Yeti getting busy on the movement around the map and catching G2 on the side stab. Only problem is Doki's found himself two kills so far on that window up on the north side and has cut down any potential rotations away from SSG. Rampy's left against three. We've been here before, Tim, and Doki's going to get the shut down. What a massive round from the Scott. Blur was getting the diffuser down again as well there. I think Fabian's going to be pretty happy with what he's seeing at the minute. Um, you know, the attacks of G2 are creating chances. <laughs> The attacks from G2 are creating chances to get that diffuser down. They're playing the objective well. Um, you know, and this is this is on Villa, let's not forget. They're two one up now on attacks. One more attack and they're feeling like they've won this half. Whew. Okay. Onwards we march. What can SSG do to keep turning this one around? Remember under again they're on the defensive side of things here. I do wonder if we see a tactical... Now, Alamar saying stop baiting your team, Yeti. Again, I'll say it, I think Yeti actually played that round quite sensibly. I think the way he was looking to play was a little bit more dynamic, a little more of a backstab attempt, similar to what we saw G2 doing to SSG back on Cafe, was looking to bring some life in, because otherwise, SSG has sat there like fish in a barrel, waiting to be shot out by G2, waiting to be naded for free. Just got to see a bit more. Here we go then. See if uh, the downstairs holds any better prospects than the upstairs. The sledge was banned out, of course, by G2. Um, so they may choose uh, to bring, I was going to say Alamo is uh, pretty well known as a book player, so it's not going to be too much of an issue. Um, he's going to bring on the book and they'll still have that vertical destruction uh, available. Less nerds. Uh, they're only going to have two on the side in the hands of Benja. And that shouldn't be too much of a problem now then. What's Rampy doing? He's on the Surely vigil. Not. He's got the barricade prepped. It's, you just look at it and think, is it the sort of thing that SSG need, you know, but also you think, are they just starting to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks? 
Absolutely. Go on, Rampy. He's not fancying that. Get out of the window, Rampy. He could get himself back in the window below, but it's just going to be... Uh, if there's two players there, he's done for. So I think it'd be far... I, I think at this point, yeah, he's not going to... He's obviously not going to hear now, no. But Benja's now the one trying to work his way through. I think that's... We had three different players playing Iana so far in this game for G2. I'll look at the stats in a moment, but Bosco getting himself on the board there as well this round. Alamal taken down, but a bit of a demon across a couple of the last two maps, or a couple of rounds in the last two maps. So never a bad player to remove. Instantly answered those, yes, he's taken out by Benja. Benja almost loses that fight, finds himself now on about 10, 15 health and needs to be careful about what engagements he's getting into. He's got to remember he's also got the nades on side as well. If they do need to clear any utility or positions, um, you know, wanting to drop them in from above or anything like that, he doesn't want to be throwing his life away. Rampy is still, I think, unknown in his location. He's using this vigil ability well, keeping himself off the drones, off the radar, off the grid, and he's going to be looking to get onto a flank and do so some damage later in the round. Orky just going to collect his drone, I'd imagine, for use later no in here, the though, round. Right? But this is it. This Ramp is sort of chasing oh, around an area, is. locking it down, but he's and going to be waiting for Dorky, but I don't know if Dorky's aware here. He's going to... Oh, Ramp, just misses his opportunity. Dorky sprays down. Damage is done, and he's on the hunt. I don't think a Candela would have been worth throwing in here. You've got four of them, but going to get pushed and lose. Oh, if you know that he's trapped inside a vault, I really, again, think a single Candela would be enough to guarantee you a kill that you wouldn't be Scoffing at Benja on the below, though. Honestly, he's having an unbelievable map of Villa. Rampy's unlucky there. He's down to such low health. That nade, um, you know, it wasn't pinpoint accurate, but it was close enough to do the tickle that was needed to take Rampy down. So a little bit unfortunate for him there, but Rampy not doing a terrible job up on the top floor, taking Doki down and the Ying particularly. Might just make the execute a bit more difficult. Benja's low health for G2 as well. 45 seconds, and they're not really in a position to push in and execute as of yet. Absolutely not. Benja finding himself sniffed out here. So the blur as he marches in just finds Bosco. Big round coming out from him. A trade coming in as well. Virtue answering up for blur. The support duo of G2 stacking up together. Fultz rounds the corner, but again, Benja cannot be stopped. Three kills in the round, all floating around Art Studio. What a fantastic round from the newbie. G2 just seems to be able to find a way at the minute, and this is not looking good for SSG. They are now 10-1 down on rounds in this entire series. There's for anybody who's joined us partway through this one. On. SSG did lose the first map, Cafe 7-0 to G2. Um, so with 3-1 on the board at the minute, that leaves us 10-1 overall. And SSG just having a terrible day at the office at the moment. Torrid time. And the tap timeout coming in. Let's hear what SSG have got to say. We're working together. We just need to know, like, if people can't help, we can't just be taking, like, 2v, like 1v2s openly. Yeah. Make sure we're working together more. Yeah. Let's go, boys. Yeah, the comms got to be better, honestly. The trophy round, the same thing. Like, if we are talking about doing an A play, we got to commit on that. Or if we're not doing it, we got to call it. So we okay. don't do it. Yep. Let's go, uh, yeah, go back, go back, AV. Uh, let's run the maze again. Let's run the maze again. I want to get off. Yeah, just run something else, man. You don't need to run Bro, Matt, bring, can you bring a sheet? Okay, okay. Bro, I'm going to go hide, uh, I'm going to go hide, like, part. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to be starting with the You're fine. You want me to put a goo mine? All right. Communication, communication, communication. Yep, I mean, you know, pretty uh, understandably, you know, pretty hmm. pretty muted on the SSG side, you know, pretty um, pretty low-key, really. And like you say, it's, it's got to be difficult for them at this point because what do they do? Um, you know, they tried quite a few thing, different things on Cafe. It didn't work out. They've come here on Villa. They're now losing 3-1 on their own defence. Um, you know, as they say, maybe the comms aren't up there, but that could be a direct result of the, the scoreline that they face yeah. at the minute, you know. Um, as they start to sort of get beaten up more and more, the players are likely to, you know, go a little bit quieter. We did hear Fultz saying he was going to hide himself away. He's on the pulse. He's going to be all the way down in basement. So certainly one to watch if Virtue don't pick him up on the droning. There was a saying that I heard once in the non-esports work that I do, which is 90% of team issues come from poor communication. And it feels really generic to be, oh, yeah, communication. Also, did you notice him? 87% of stats are made up on the spot. <laughs> so the one way I'm looking at that and just thinking about it more is the message that it sends is that really a lot of a team's issues will come from communication. Now, that number obviously will vary quite a lot, I imagine, in a sport-based uh, scenario like this where it does come down more to the skill, the strategy as well. But if a team isn't talking, if they aren't working together, it's the same thing we always say about Koi. When their energy is low, 
you can see it reflects in their gameplay. When it's high, it also reflects in their gameplay. And I think that's true across a wide number of teams. And we've heard them saying there, look, don't go taking 1v2s alone. Call for the help. Talk to each other. That's a communication issue. G2 have got players downstairs in the basement. Uh, oh, yeah, he's going to wait. Surely. Surely no way. He, uh, you must Andrew hear is going to pick him up on red stairs. I'm, I was more concerned about Fultz. Dorky was downstairs in basement. Fultz is down there, but they haven't picked him up, Des. Fultz is still on the roam. He's still out and free and could cause a problem to G2 later in the round if they don't have the uh, the proper cover. He's got himself up into dining, but no, he's going to be shut down by virtue. G2 just know everything. Just letting them walk into them is the best part. And The thing is, I, I commended SSG for this earlier on. Uh, Yeti especially, you know, being willing to be the backstab to kind of work through G2's web that was being spun and find a couple of kills and at least giving teams some hope that that round could come for them. Obviously, Doki went massive in it, so that kind of got shut down. But here they're trying to do the same. They're working their way through the map. The one thing I'm a little bit confused by there is you know Benja has been an absolute demon around library. He has not left it pretty much the entirety of this game and has just consistently put up big, big numbers from below with the grenades, catching players as they rotate around. He's doing a wonderful job. Either way, I just think SSG aren't able to play the game they need to play versus G2 because G2 have done such a good job of shutting it down. They finally get an answer and Doki goes down. But by this point, Tim, it's already a two versus four. Bosco and Hot and Cold got to do all they can to hold on. I so say it's already a very tough situation now uh, for SSG to try and turn around. We saw Hot and Cold trying to get on a flank uh, at a point, but Rampy was able to get there first, ultimately lost his life. So Hot and Cold dips back to his original position. It's going to be down um, to Bosco to try and hold down the site specifically he's going to open up his angle to be able to send toxic babes through but he's uh, likely going to come under some pressure the thing is SSG are just playing in such a small space there's they've got two of them left they both just stood on the pool table it's not the end of the world they're covering the angles they need to cover 20 seconds left to go the likelihood is been that G2 before. get in here for a plant we have been here before and it's when a little bit of a backstab came in and they lost a couple outs although it was Alamal the backstab before they did quite a lot of work the difference here being SSG don't have anywhere near enough numbers one kill goes down but immediately there is a response and a trade. Benja, take a bow, my son. What a game he is having. And it's not all about the kill speed for him, by the way. I know he's had two big rounds there, a 3K, and I think another 3K there as well. But it's away from those numbers for me. It's the amount of presence he creates by just parking himself on the ground floor and making himself known when the execute comes around. Honestly, for a young player, I am ridiculously impressed. Doing very, very well so far. I can't stress it enough. Like, I don't normally get this, like, you know, hyped up about a player, but that is unbelievable. I know he's against a team that's not really punching back right now, but whew. That's it. To be, to be fair, SSG at this point, um, yeah, I've, 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 as I always do, I've really tried to find the positives. Um, you know, I've really tried to find something, um, you know, that's, that's working well for them, but they just look, they, they look out on their feet at the minute, Des. Um, you know, they look like they're sort of going through the motions, but they just can't compete in the gunfights. They just, they, they look, they look beaten already. They do, they do. And again, <sighs> We said this in one of the games the other day for SSG, and I don't want to like, again, I don't want to send for like, and he's one of the nicest guys in the scene, really helpful. But this is where you need a leader. And I feel that this isn't even necessarily on him. This is on the five players in the server as well. I don't see a leadership figure on SSG right now. You know, think back when Canadian was here and they lifted the hammer all those years ago. That was when they had a leader. A guy that both in-game and out of it was a leader for the team. And we're seeing that from Troy across on Dark Zero now, when they won the Charlotte Major. Yeah, we need to find someone who can be that figure for this team. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves staying in the dumps as they have done throughout this entire series and arguably really throughout most of the competition. Let's take down the Gemini decoy for all of you that got excited and thought uh, that Ariana of Benja was just sprinting into the main door there. It was not. Uh, Rampy going to take him down, just going to be trying to use that cloaking device once again to keep himself um, under wraps. But I think they're going to have a good idea of his position. He was at the top of main stairs. There's only two places you can go from there. Um, so it's a reasonable guess that he's going to have headed into Study Dork. He's actually going to pick him up. There you go. Um, so they were well aware of exactly where he would be operating. That's your vigil gone. And I've said this countless times before, if you're going to play the Vigil, he doesn't bring any team utility. He doesn't bring, you know, your Maestro cameras. He doesn't bring Black Eye cameras. He doesn't bring Capcan traps. You know, he doesn't bring anything like that that's that's doing something for the team. What he's bringing um, is an ability to give himself kills, and he's got to get them um, and waste time, and he's got to do that, and that just hasn't happened here. Kill after kill coming in for G2. This is going to be a flawless round as Fultz is trying to get anything going that he can. There's a lot of damage on the side of G2 at the minute. Fultz could... 
potentially stop the flawless round. But the problem is, G2 know where he is now, so they can just keep him at bay, get the diffuser down, and he's going to have to play into their angles. There you go, flawless round. That's how you play the R4C, guys. I was just going to pull on the uh, soft push call. Good job, good job. It's almost sad at this point, honestly. <laughs> I feel like we're really beating a dead horse, but it does just feel sad. Seeing a team that's lifted the hammer, that, you know, has these accolades behind them. I'm hoping that... Rolling over. I'm so... I was going to say, I'm sort of hoping that it's a bad day. Um, but it's been a couple of bad days now. That's what I mean. and That's the problem. I'm doing my best, as. <laughs> when Tim's struggling to find big things to say, you know there's an issue. I'm doing my best, as I always do. Um, you know, you've got to remember that you've got five players there and a coach that are, that are doing everything they can. And it's not working for them right now. And you've got to feel for them. You know, as you do for any, any sporting team, um, you know, in, a, in any competitive environment, they are turning up and they're wanting the best result they can get. And I can tell you now, 12-1 down in rounds is not what they're looking for. You know, and it's not what they've put their time and their, their passion and their heart into. Um, so I, I do feel for them. And like you say, as an org SSG, such a big part of Siege and, you know, such a, a good history. Um, you know, you don't want to see it like this. And, and I'm hopeful yeah. That, you know, let's not forget, this isn't the end. They aren't out of the They're not out of the competition. And I'm hopeful that over the next, you know, day or two, that they can put the work in um, and that they can do what's needed to, to turn it around and show us something different in that next phase. I was just looking down the uh, results as well for SSG because I know that if they lose this game, they finish on four points. But obviously that says to you that there have been two zeros the whole way through, both for them and against them. The only team they've beaten is Elevate, who got zero points. I mean, overall, Apex not had a good show in this event. Across the three teams here, all of them have been knocked out. They've got four points between them, and that is that. That's all they've got to offer. So for SSG to only be beating a team like that, to get a good few rounds to be fair against a Koi that looks very, very soft yesterday when we cast them, who are now much in much better form and in much better shape, yeah, you do worry about how it's going to go when they get into the next round of the competition. I'm really hoping over the weekend that they can sort this out and get things back on track because they were speaking about, you know, the strength that Yeti brings to the team. We've seen it in a couple of rounds, but when everyone else around you is maybe a little bit low, a little bit flat, it can be hard to lift it up. Let's see, though, if they can do anything here on the attacking side. They have more of the ability here to lead the round the way they want to, and that's a good start. Alamal, the first one taken out. Much better for SSG there. Yeti taking him down, and no trade. No opportunity Loki. for G2 to level the man count. Rampy's coming in aggressively as well, what? but he's going to get fired. Where's out. the call? And Loki goes in. I think Rampy was on drones, potentially, at they that point. They saw him. They saw him on the, on the Rotero. They knew he was there. They pulled the trigger to explode the Rotero, but no call came in. Loki is going to be downed and finished off by Fultz, and that leaves us now in a four versus three. Still going okay for SSG. Let's not hit panic stations just yet. Virtue, he's going to be holding on from 90 corridor at the minute. He's just on the angle. Fultz is aware, so SSG using those drones well. Still six left on side, aware of what's going on. Um, and hopefully, for them, they can start picking up a few more kills. So, so frustrating because the death was avoidable as well, that last one. But either way, they've got Round three. is a hold, though, Des. No, it's not. Absolutely well, not. All right. It's just one of those I'm looking at and saying it was wholly avoidable, and that's what's frustrating about it. What I will give to SSG is they spun their own web here the same way G2 did back in the first half, and they've caught a couple of members on their moves around the map. Sure, though, he got a freebie, but they were there ready for a trade from Master as well. So there are some elements of life and team play coming out here for the side of SSG on their first attack. Blur and Virtue, the two in the back, are the ones left trying to work some magic. Maybe this is the moment. Blur knows that there's somebody above the <laughs> window on the upside down. Oh, he's going to commit to playing it. He's going to move up a little bit closer, but he's going to take a lot of damage there. Has no choice but to dip himself away. He's going to give him... <laughs> I love this. He, he's right out of dodge. He's going to switch to the shotgun so he can get himself in through the main door quicker, and he's actually got away with that one. Yeah, no one's out on that side of the building at this point. They're all working their way in from the north. Virtue's found himself going down, and I know Blur's had a pretty good series overall. But I was going to say, even he can't win this one, I don't think. Down they go, and SSG take themselves around. That was a long road to, to come out with the same outcome there from Blur. Um, just got him out itself out, back in, um, and still shot down from the same window. As I blew it up, he was running 90, and then as it started like detonating, he ran back to deer. I was like, oh my god. At least yes, he is the there's your answer. Him. Yeah, you know, there's your answer. He was uh, maybe a little bit of unpredictable movement from Doki. Yeti saw him going one direction, thought that was going to be the end of it, and then um, Doki doubled back and went and got that kill. But I was really worried it was going to be flat communication, i.e. Cinnamon, and then not made the call and say, okay, Doki's in hall, Doki's in hall. Just one of those things that can happen. 
Right, let's see how we do with Aviator in games once more. G2, I think they might recognize the mistakes from that last round was trying to be a little bit too mobile around Villa. They are used to spinning that web in the first half. No doubt they're bringing with confidence. They are so far in the lead, they can afford to take a couple of risks maybe, but maybe that was a bit too far when it came round to the risk game. And I think you're seeing that here in the picks. Alamo across on towards that pulse, feeding information and no doubt guiding the others in towards potentially finding kills. A different style needed. I think. Uh, I think you're right there. SSG um, did very well. I, I was. I was pretty impressed overall. Um, they pushed in well as a team. Um, like you said, there was the one mistake on the drone, but otherwise they had a, a good appreciation of what G2 were doing and where. Uh, most of the deaths on the side of G2, there wasn't really much um, of a contest about it. Um, you know, we saw Benja close down underneath with no opportunity to fight back. Same for Blur, pretty much. Um, so yeah, very good from SSG. Uh, certainly better than we've seen so far. All right, Alamal's the one ratting up towards the far north side here on this pulse. Has the basement to retreat into if he needs to get out of dodge. It's that place of the map where I think no one really knows any call-outs or really knows their way around it at the best of times. But him feeding information here will give the indication over to the rest of his team where SSG are pushing him from. If he spots two or three players on the north side, they know it's going to be a north side push. If he spots just the one, fair to assume most are going to be basing themselves around study and G2 can either point their attentions that way or deploy utility that way specifically looking in towards things like those keeper barriers. Rampy going in uh, behind the drone, of course. Just going to check his immediate uh, vicinity. Alamo needs to be careful with... Uh with the IQ on board, because obviously can, IQ can see uh, Pulse at a greater distance than Pulse can see IQ. Um, so there is a, a slight advantage there. Alamo knows somebody's coming in on the door, and I tell you what, Hart and Cole was very lucky not to find himself hit with a headshot there. Rampy is going to get the kill onto Benja, though, so still a good start for SSG, and the hunt is on for the Pulse. Indeed, then get rid of him, and to be fair, there's two or three of them starting to close in here. If he gets a kill out of this, it's wonderful. If he can make it a couple, then even better. Swings out towards the right. Almost gets a second as well, but it's a great trade back. Not the end of the world as well. Taking that pulse off is a really big pick. You won't be too beat up about losing your IQ. No, that's fine for SSG. Um, go in there, play it as a, a 2v1, ensure that you get the kill, um, and then come away and continue the clearance. The problem is, do they know that Dork is underneath? Um, because, again, he's one of those players that you just know, given uh, the opportunity to get onto a flank. He's going to do a lot of damage. I think Yeti is aware um, that he's potentially moving around. They're very cautious of it. Pulse is going to pick up Virtue. Yeti onto Dorky. Nice. This is a try... <laughs> Just testing his crouch key, Tim. Testing the crouch key. It does maybe, work. Maybe a little bit soon in the process for Passing that. Well. Um, but <laughs> Yeti is going to get the kill onto Dorky. And this is another round likely to be going to SSG. They certainly seem to be uh, improving and back into things on the attack. And Blur again, he's left in a 1vx. This is why you can't beat up support players too much sometimes when they struggle uh, when it comes to KD. They are often left as a... If your team have won, your entry fraggers have done their job, they've won the round for you most times, more often than not. If it's coming down to you losing a round, it's because you're left in a 1vx, overbearing against attackers who have beaten your entries. So with three coming in against him here, it feels like a bit of an impossible task. One was holding off on the side angle there for a second blur. Shotgun in hand, sees one, gets one puff off, but can't quite find any of them here. They're going to push it together as a three, finds one. Can he get the Nexus one? Maneuvering around so well. Plant is going to have to go down here, but does he know about the man behind the map's table? He should expect it. C4 comes out, but it's far too shallow. Can't find the man and will find himself rounding. Fultz finds the kill. SSG get another round and G2 call their timeout. A little bit unfortunate from Blur there. We're trying all of these fucking fancy ass plays against these shit. They have no idea what the fuck they're doing on this map. We're trying individual plays that doesn't lead to anything, and then we mess up the round. We go into man disadvantage. And then we go into mana disadvantage again because we lose another guy trying another play. Let's stop with that stuff. Don't go on the default bomb sites. I think you should try both your living and kitchen card before you go back to AVG if we can do it at all. Because they know how to attack the basic bomb sites. These are the two ones that we everyone attacks. Oh, yeah. We are not playing as a team. Start doing that, start doing, doing the plays together. If Doki and Carl would have played together in the first time on this round, it would have been much better. But we're doing individual stuff. Stop overcomplicating shit. And let's just get this game over with. Let's go, boys. You wanna go trophy yeah, or nothing? Uh, I, I love the difference in styles. Uh, me... I think they know how to attack living. Okay. Yeah, they, they play it a lot themselves, the defense. Okay, Coach's input over. They only have 45 seconds and the mics then have to disappear, but you... I don't want to say it's annoyance, but it's kind of like a little bit of frustration on Fabian's side. You know, cut the fancy crap. 
let's play as a team, let's get these firefights done, let's get the map out of the way, let's go to it. This is what I like as well about coaches when I've listened to them, is it's offering more prescriptive advice or feedback. Like he was saying then, you know, let's not go to the default sites. Every team knows about the default sites. If we're going to go there, let's try something a little bit different. What I already like about going onto this site with this particular setup is G2 are one of the first teams to run this in the middle of last year. Oh, he's a you, nightmare. He is. He's really good at stepping in on this triple wall and challenging on towards the bathroom window. Just in out, in out all the time and they can't really do anything about it. It's even worse now that Azami's on the team because of, well, in the roster, I guess, or the ability to play that operator because she helps you double down on those areas where you can't re-barricade them as a castle once they've been taken out. So chances are G2 are going to make this really frustrating for the side of SSG and we'll see if we do see them come together more as a team like Fabian asked for. I think that's it. You know, the, the success against SSG for, for anybody really so far has come in frustrating them, burning them down to the end of the round and, you know, having them push in late and time be a factor. So, you know, play into that. Like he said, you know, don't be getting caught out on your own, giving them a five versus three in the first minute or so because they're going to move a lot quicker. This has got to be one of the most frustrating plays that I've probably seen um, in a long time in Siege, and it is Alamo in Master Bedroom with the army. He will just play a Kiba Barricade after Kiba Barricade after Kiba Barricade to stand behind. He'll play on that triple wall, and if SSG don't have an answer, if they don't find a kill onto him, they're going to find things very, very difficult. Well, here we've got SSG working in on the below, looking to fish with some of those grenades. Both players, Rampy, uh, well, Rampy and Fultz, both on the Nook and the Iana, respectively, with four nades in back pocket to send Skywood. I'm hoping they can find a player or two. For now, at least, Alamal playing quite smart, though, has stepped across on towards the concrete, still has the ability to challenge in towards bedroom, but for now, at least, bathroom will be the one that is left uncontested. He's just holding on to um, his gadgets. As you can see, he's now totted up four. He's not going to start using them until SSG get into a position to try and push into Master, should they choose to do so. Um, and like I say, it's just, it, it, it's one of those positions I'm probably going to have to start calling it, you know, the Alamo spot. Um, you know, it's <laughs> the same exactly out of Shaco for some of the... No, 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 we'll just keep calling it triple ball. Sit with triple ball. Here He's he playing goes. triple ball. Here he goes. And this is exactly what you're going to see. And, you know, it's, it's the same reason we see the same out of Shaco in certain spots just that commanding, that understanding um, of exactly how to play it. And previously, we've seen it from Alamo, and if SSG see it today, they could be in trouble. They are fishing, but not really into the right spots at this point as well. The net grenades have come out, two have gone through, but nothing has really been removed away from the defenders just yet. Drone slowly being picked off here. Only three remaining for SSG getting into the last 60 seconds. And Tim, dare I say, it feels like they're a little bit unsure of how to tackle this right now. Alamo gets one for himself, immediately traded out as Hot and Cold has used the opportunity to get inside the bedroom, onto the bed, and find the trade from behind the keeper barricade. That's really big from SSG. Um, you know, losing only one player in that situation to Alamo is a great thing. We've seen him take many, many more from that spot. Um, so a great trade there. Not the end of the world. They've lost some of the Rotero drones, which won't um, help when it comes to the utility clearance but Benja's on really low health as well but look at the clock Des. 30 seconds left to go and SSG still need to get in for an execute they do Rampy the one looking to try and make a bit of a stab work here as well as Blur goes down Virtue as well 4v2 for SSG can we see the start of the comeback coming through here realistically Tim Doki steps up and finds one for himself has now got to round himself in towards the site as he is the last one left standing going to be nothing to come of it as Hot and Cold finds that final kill and SSG are slowly but surely climbing their way back into this game. Now within one round behind, there is nothing that G2 seem to be able to find on defence and this is much more of the matchup that we wanted to see between these two teams. Absolutely. I mean, even after the timeout, you're still seeing them losing out in the gunfights here and this is where S uh, SSG, this is where G2 start to get tested now and whether or not we do see SSG she pull it through towards overtime or potentially a clean map win. Yes, they're still at four and five. They've got three rounds to win in a row if they want this map to be done here in regulation. But it's looking pretty good. Here we go with what some might consider somewhat of an offsite on the downstairs. Not dealing with those grenades fishing in from below, for example. Instead, digging in behind mirror windows. Maybe playing a little more safely with the bandits on side as well. G2 need to win a defence and they need to win one now, um, is the way that I will put it. If they want to, to have some real success on Villa and close this out in two maps, they don't want to let SSG level up with them because, as you could hear, SSG, as much as they've been beaten up, they've got at least a couple of players in there that are hyping things up. We heard them shouting over the top, you know, SSG have won another attack. Ooh, SSG have won another attack. And this is the problem that I'm impressed, really, with the bounce back mentally from SSG, um, you know, that they 
straight back into that hype. Doki going out of the window, looking to just give a little bit of an advantage to G2, but need to just be cautious that they're not losing those entry deaths. It's not quite having the same impact as on Cafe, where G2 were quite simply bullying SSG on the early spawn peaks. I don't blame him for trying to look for an early kill, because if he gets that, it can really upset the balance in the rest of the SSG team. But neither side punished for it, and things carry on as if nothing ever happened. SSG looking to get themselves control of the north side of the map as well. Not going for a full clear here, which I think is the right choice. If you want to try and push him from the south side, then get north control, then get vertical control, it might just be a few steps too many, as we saw in a couple of the sites coming out on Cafe. Three rounds in a row now that SSG have won. G2 might just be forgetting that winning feeling um, and they're going to want to remind themselves. We're going to have the master bedroom closet getting opened up um, with the Selma Chargers. G2 really trying to hold on to the top floor for now. A little challenge from Blur, but his mirror window is going to be open, so he's not going to be able to play too hard on that. But Virtue, he makes it a good start for G2. He manages to pick up the headshot. Uh, they're inside. But Rampy has got in and got the trade. This is dangerous for G2. Yeah, two of them are forced their way in here as well. Real good to abuse the space left open by G2 are committing so hard to the upstairs, but Doki's in over the table, takes out his man, it's into a second, make it a third, and G2 collapse on top of SSG and clap them out the server. They move up to match and series points. I appreciate the idea, I appreciate the effort from SSG there. They saw an opportunity and they tried to take it, but G2 responded very, very well. Um, like you say, Doki was just eager to get that shut down straight over the table. There was absolutely nothing going to stand in his way um, and G2 were able to collapse back to site and deal with that very very quickly you wonder if they'd maybe invited them in a little bit um, and had one eye on that potential because they were certainly ready to react they were so can they keep it going can they get two rounds back to back or did G2 close things out here and what has looked to be a little bit shakier on the defensive half of Villa I think we heard Fabian's own statements really being, look, you guys, I know you're a little bit confident here. Let's stop with the silly players. Let's get things closed out. The thing is, I don't blame them. Playing with confidence is fine when you're so far ahead, but we cannot see them losing things out here. Not that it really matters all that much, because as that reminder, in fact, it does matter. Now I think about it, based on the result of the other game, which there's currently a bit of chatter going on, we might have what's called a mini league, where the three teams that finish at the very top of the group, all tied in the same number of points, enter into a game where only the fixtures between each other then start to count. We start looking at things like results head to head. We look at round difference, for example. All these things start to weigh in to determine who finishes first, second and third. So maybe there is a very real chance here for G2 to climb, not just into third, but above that in towards second which could arguably give them an easier time in their next game on Monday. Well, this is it. You know, ultimately, even coming down to the basics, winning's a habit, you know, and G2 will want to win this as well as they can. Um, you know, as, as well as the position can be in the group, um, it's better for the mentality, for the morale going forward. Um, you know, you'd rather finish second than third. Simple as that. Now then, Benja's going to be positioned out on red stairs. G2 have an opportunity to, to close this one down. Dorky's getting aggressive in master, looking for the peaks again. He's certainly trying round after round to give G2 these big starts. He's not had the best time on entry, um, not been picking many of them up, but still going well. So the little bit of chatter I've got that actually there's a world here where G2 finish in first place if it carries on because, again, only the games against each other are considered and G2 in their games between Koi and W7M have the better round if overall. They could literally swipe first place away from the other two teams there whilst they're scrapping it out. Yeti though takes down Alamao and this really again does require G2 to win this 2-0 and zero. so suddenly it starts to get really important so that they close this out here and now. Yeah, it starts to seem like it matters a little bit more. Doki's going to drop back um, into sight there. He's going to be just looking to hold on. Um, it's going to be, sorry, into um, directly above site. He's looking to hold on to Aviator Games. Yes, there we go. Sorry, I confused myself there. Um, it's not difficult. Benj is going to be underneath. Particularly important is he's got the Nitro in hand. Blur does have one as well, so they've got plenty of Diffuser Denial. Blur is going to take a bit of damage there. Just needs to be careful. Um, I don't know exactly where that was coming from. It Probably was like it's uh, going to be... Uh, Potentially that. There's a lot of work being done from SSG on that side of things. They've got the vault open. They're making it difficult for G2 to play in the positions that they want to. I don't know if Benj has got the information for the player above him. Yes, he does. There goes the Nitro, but he's going to miss his throw. Rampy does take some damage from it, but not enough. 
That's what I always talk about. His players, the number of times they get caught out pushing up towards 90 like that is crazy. Benja maybe a little bit too hesitant though with throwing out that C4. Won't find the kill. Puts him down to half HP, so it could have been far worse. He might have got no damage down. And now Doki's getting ready for a fight up towards top red here. Sees the man step across. Takes out a drone, but must know there's a couple of players here waiting. And there we go. He finds one onto Bosco. Still one more. Gets the second. That are the kind of kills that you need from one of your front men. Doki swing. Oh my god! Finds a 4k, Ramp is the last one left alive. He wants his ace and he's going hunting. Blur will deny, but Doki's had an incredible round. And he's like, why have you taken it from me, bro? Why have you done me like that? Massive round from Doki and G2 take the 2-0 and make it as good as they can to try and fight.